Oh my god. Um, John, can we have the roll call? Sure. Edward Vino. Here. Donald Matisse. Here. Gregory Stewart. Here. Betty Harris Howard. Here. Jamie Wolf. Here. Aaron Chase. Here. Jim King. Seven. Number. Here. I'll keep my eye out. He's not here yet. Um, Richard Dory. Here. And Brett McCarthy. Present. Thank you all. Okay. Yeah. Our first item on the agenda is, is case number 24-01, 95 Woodlawn Lane, consisting of a request for a conditional use permit to expand a legally non-conforming cottage in the shoreline zone. Richard Jones and Susan Bond, map 025, lot 005. Continued from February 14th, 2024, um, at the planning board meeting. Do you have something to explain to us? If not? Yes. Um, Ellie, in favor, representing the applicants. And at the last meeting, there were um, a couple of questions that affect the cottage design. Yeah. Um, the designer was working on modifying the height, so that will mm -hmm. meet the winter ordinances. Um, the other two, we wanted clarification on. One is the 30% expansion to include the existing footprint area that's within 25 feet. And Dawn has more information on that. She may have handed that to the board. So we want to talk about that. And then the second thing was the drain that's going toward the lake. And we've got some more information on that. Just a couple of things. So um, the the thirty percent expansion. The question was at the last meeting whether or not that could be used for the expansion, which would be beyond twenty five feet. And in the winter ordinance, I believe it allows it. And then in addition to that, when we told the enforcement officer and reached out to DEP and got an opinion back that that's correct. Um, 30% can be applied to the portion that's within 25 feet. So we just wanted to make sure that that was acceptable before the cottage revision is uh, finalized. And then second, on the drains going toward the lake, um, I submitted to DEP back in January a permit by rule application for earth disturbance. And it's termed, and I sent that form to Dawn today, um, outfall pipes, what it's called. Um, and they reviewed the same plan that you have and approved the outfall pipes. Um, the benefit to this design, putting in the um, roof drip edge filters and putting them underground and into the foundation drain of the building, is it really cleans the storm water and it, it cools it at certain times of the year, hot times of the year, putting it underground. So the water that's outletted to the pond is really a, a better quality than what you'd have at times running over the ground to the lake. So DEP actually promotes those um, and we use it as a standard on not only projects like this, but also commercial projects that um, require a stormwater permit from DEP. Um, there's now, you all know, in addition to the <clears throat> quantity limitations, um, there's also a quality design that has to be considered. And one of the 
designs we use to meet those standards is these root group edge filters going underground and then daylighting on site, obviously at a lower elevation. And in this case, even though it's adjacent to the lake, um, we put in a small riprap plunge pool. There's, there's not a significant flow coming out. It actually slows it down when it goes down through the filter, um, through the underdrain pipe toward the lake. So I think, and DEP agrees, and then you may have something from Bill Monaco that I haven't seen yet. Um, that's a better way to take care of stormwater, even when you're adjacent and close to the lake like this project is. So those are the two things that we'd like to get clarification on the 30% expansion being available and that these under drain pipes coming from the root group edge filters are acceptable. Okay. Does anyone on the board have questions? Sure. Go ahead. Um, I had a uh, comment and question. Uh, first of all, uh, in regard to the 30% expansion, I believe I was the one that raised that concern about that section out. Uh, uh, yeah. To the shoreland side of the 25 foot zone. So, uh, reading the ordinance, it still looks a little bit ambiguous, but uh, I I certainly can appreciate the interpretation of allowing the entire structure, and I think that uh, a reading certainly is, is a reasonable reading to allow that. So uh, at this point, certainly I have no problem with that. I'm going to suggest we, when we update our ordinance, we might want to clarify that a bit, just so that in the future, no one else. Uh, Misinterpret that. Uh, the uh, so I'm, I'm glad we got that resolved, and that that shouldn't impact the project. Um, the other question is just sort of interested me in regard to these uh, outfall drains. Um, the the pipes going uh, to the uh, basin. Well, I mean, wouldn't call it catch basin, but the uh, you know where the outfall pointed. Are those pipes perforated or are they solid pipe? Perforated. Yeah, okay, great. So so the there's an opportunity for inter, infiltration even before they get to the outfall point. That's correct. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, that sounds great. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, if I could um I just want to interrupt to let you know, and I'm sure you've all seen it now, but the um permit by rule application that has the submittal date on it um, is here for you to look at and also the email from um, the uh, from Bill Monica. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone got the paperwork. We all set with our paper. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any questions or comments to make? I, I do. Um, so I mean, I I I I want to explain some rationale a little bit more. Um the fact that you are installing gutter drains, great. The fact that you're installing drains, great. Everything about that is great, except for the location of the drains and the fact that if you weren't adding a basement to this place, that wouldn't be needed. And the basement is three feet below ground because you're up against the height limitation. So from a planning board perspective, you could just add a frost wall, then your drain could be up three feet high and your drains could be 10 or 20 feet closer to the building itself. So it's really not a question of the location of the drains, the fact the drains exist. 
The question is, should we allow a basement being built that close to the water that's going to create drains right next to the lake? So does everybody kind of get my understanding is that they're asking for permission to put a basement under this building. They're doing what they can, but the question is, should we allow that on a structure this close to the lake? Because it is going to have some infiltration. Hopefully they'll wrap it with fabric, wrap it with stone, so that the idea with wrapping it with fabric, when you put this underground drain and it's going to be you know, buried in stone, is you're going to keep the, the natural groundwater from coming in. So you're going to keep the you know, sediment out, things like that, so that that's not going to go directly into the, into the lake. My concern is the location. And the reason the location has to be there is because of the elevation of that basement. If the basement was four feet shorter, those drains could be right next to the building and it wouldn't be a problem. It's because they have to be at that elevation so that they can actually drain downhill that they have to be so close to the lake. So every foot that we pick that building up, we could move those drains another four feet closer to the building and less close to the water. So my original objection is that they're so close to the water and I get there's a height limitation. I get all the other concerns. So I understand this limitation, but as a board, our job is to protect the water. And I, I appreciate the drains. I appreciate everything about the design. The question to me really came down to, should we allow a basement? You know, or should we just say they have to put in frost walls? Because putting in a basement is gonna require drains and it's gonna require possible additional direct routes for sedimentation and for you know whatever comes down in the runoff to actually go into the lake almost directly. There'll be a small settling pool, but that's still not there. That's why I was originally thinking of French drain, but just looking at the project later the next day, I said, that would be challenging, you know, because again, the basement is so low, it's three feet below the existing ground level. And the reason they don't want to lift that up is plain and simple because they, they have a height limitation because they're so close to the lake. So I'm just not saying one way or the other. My opinion, my own opinion is I'm not going to approve it because I don't think that basement should be added. That's just my opinion. And I just wanted to voice the rationale behind it is they're doing everything they possibly can. And I agree with the drains. I agree with everything about it. But should we be allowing a basement to be added to a building that close to the water? That's my only concern. What based on those, I think you said if you look it by a foot, you could move it up four feet closer to the, to the building. Correct. But so if there's no basement, we're talking 12 feet closer. Potentially, yes. Yep. <laughs> And, and and honestly, they could be direct drains right in front of the building because there is no basement. So you're not trying to collect and keep water out of the basement. Yeah. So, so it would be right at the front of the building. The drains would then have to, they would still go over the ground. But so it's whatever that, what were we like 20 something feet from the water? Yeah. So the drains, the plunge pool, everything could still be done just 20 feet away from the water, not right next to the lake. So you say with the basement, you have to go back. Well, with the basement, they have to go closer to the lake because the basement is three, three and a half feet below the ground. And you have to slope downhill so that the water, otherwise you'd have a swimming pool or the basement, right? It would be, you'd dump all the water. You have to have a drain that drains. So it has if you that move gravity. it back, you, it would be different. If if the building wasn't so close to the water, you'd have you'd have a, you'd have my issue is the drains literally come out on the shoreline. So I mean, within five feet of the actual water shoreline. So the basement is the problem. The basement to me is the problem with this design, and well, and, and it's because of the proximity to the lake. Right. If the building was a hundred feet back and they were adding drains, no and it had yeah, no problem. So everything is because the building's so close to the lake. And the system that they've designed is not much, not an easy way around it, but it's the fact they're adding a basement that's creating the problem. If they didn't add the basement, you wouldn't have this problem because you, you could have drains right there where the rain runs off right at the front of the building because you don't need to keep your basement dry. You don't have a basement. It's a you know frost wall. Right. Can I ask a question? Because I wasn't here for this. Yeah, nice. <clears throat> is this the <laughs> public water supply and resource protection zone or just one or the other it's upper narrows isn't it yeah yeah upper narrows or lower, lower narrows. narrows 
floor. And it is in part of the public water supply. Yeah. And, uh, is it where the cliffs are, the big rocky? No. no it's not resource protection, probably? No, it's okay. Not. No, and the building is 20 it's feet further down. Water the, cliffs. Right. the building, <clears throat> the, front of the front of the building is only 20 feet away. That's why we had the debate about the 25 feet and the amount, the volume they could use. Right. Part of the building is, is, is you know, like, I think it wasn't like 20, I think it was like 20 feet in from the water. And then yeah, the building goes backwards and they were adding on backwards. And then we just had the debate about how much they could add on. But I had a concern about the drains and I was really thinking, I don't know of an easier way to engineer it. It's really just a question, should we allow the basement because that building is so close and it's already, the building is already so low that your, your, you know, your bottom of your basement is going to be not too far off from the lake level, high lake level. So that means your drains have to go all the way down to the water. So that was really my concern is should we allow a basement, not changing the design because I don't think there is an easy way. I originally thought there was, but the more I looked at it, I said, I don't know how I designed that any different. So I'm just saying I thought on it. Um, uh -huh. Regardless of the basement, you have the same. Regardless of the basement, you have the same square footage on the roof. So you're just going to have the same amount of water coming off, shedding off the roof, regardless of the elevation, the height of it. If the water comes off the roof, 20, you know, actually on the back side with the out with the pitch of the bank there, you've got a lot more opportunity for that concentration of water. The water will find a channel, it will make its own channel. It'll have a lot more chance to pick up sediments on the way to the water than it's coming with it only has a few feet to cross. Yeah, I mean potentially you have that regardless of the but, but you're assuming that. It's gonna, it's gonna still try to find a channel, but that's the whole idea of the vegetation, right? There's a vegetated buffer. They're not allowed to cut anything. The path can't be a direct route to the lake. Everything should be breaking up that stormwater runoff as much as possible, so that it's not carrying that sediment to the lake. So that's that's the idea behind it. And the roof runoff is is basically concentrated runoff, which you know will dig ditches. Now you've dumped all this water in one spot, so it's gonna try to cut a path. But vegetation should try to help, but that's why drains and everything else are good. So I'm again, it's just my my opinion is that mm -hmm. you know that basement is what's causing my concerns. Is it a real concern? No, I mean the water is going to be relatively clean by comparison, but you're still going to get some surface runoff in through those filters. You're going to have some some ability to filter around. Um, through the sides of the building itself as you freeze and thaw. You're going to have some ability for sediment to get in there, and these drains are going to provide no vegetation, no no anything blocking it from di dis directly distributing it to the lake. So that's, that's again, my only concern. Anyone else? So, so you're concerned about water coming in other than or is dripping up. Is well, yeah, and also the filters failing. And I mean, oh. you know, drip pools will eventually fill with sediment. All these things, you know, apartments <laughs> last for a hundred years, sort of thing. So eventually they're going to fail. And I mean, intervening drainage on the sides could go into the tops of those drains and be carried down to the water, possibly. I think they'll be covered until the until the plunge pool where they gave it. So I don't think you're going to see much of that. So it's well, really just a question of the system not working a hundred percent. And the fact that it daylights right next to the lake. But it's a flat, slow roof, if I remember right. Yes. 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 So the almost all the water off the roof is going to go into your drain. Correct. All of it is. Everything else that comes from the side, mm -hmm. it was going to come from the side anyway. And that's going to go over the ground, right? Yes. It's not any worse. In fact, it's better because you're not getting roof water. It's just rainwater or whatever on the side. Kind of like, you know, my lawn. I, and the side, the rains, the, the roof goes. Can I, can I yeah, I don't, I don't, raise, I don't really see the problem, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, so the um, the existing roof also is just a shed roof and it slopes back away from the lake. Right now it's on posts, so that water just hits the ground and goes under the cottage into the lake. So the, this, the um, 
the drains will definitely or the drain would definitely be an, an improvement which Greg agrees with. Um, I, a couple of things um, regarding the basement or not having a basement. If this were just a frost wall underneath this building, I still recommend foundation drains like you normally put in at the at the footing of a frost wall. And this basement floor is 178. So we go down, you go down say five feet to the bottom of a footing from the first floor. Um, we'd be at oh, roughly 180. So we go 181. So we'd be a couple feet higher with a foundation drain. So I think it would move it further away from the lake. You're right on that. If the drain was a couple feet higher, you daylight sooner yeah. than you do now. Um, but if it wouldn't be a huge amount. But the other thing, looking at the plan that I think would work well, I what I did, I drew those drains, knowing what the elevation of the foundation drain would be at the building. And then I just went with a minimum slope, a half a percent, which is pretty much flat, but it allows the pipe to drain. And, then, and I just ended them where that would come out of the ground, where it hit the existing contour. An improvement or something we could do to address concerns to move them back from the lake. When you reach a point where, say, the drain is a couple feet still below ground, it hasn't come out of the ground yet, we could have just a, a protected swale, you know, excavate and do riprap so that you'd be 10 feet or more than they are now back from the lake and just have a, you know, protected riprap swale until it, that came out of the ground, and which would be where I've shown the punch pools. So we could still have the draining we could stop at say 10 plus feet shorter and then have riprap swale going the rest of the way to the outlet. It would be in a you know an excavated trench. So that would allow the water when it comes out of the pipe to have a 10 or 15 foot run that it would just be going through riprap. And normally that will just infiltrate into the ground or it gets to the lake, and that could be an concerns you've got, Greg, on this outlet yeah. pipe so close. And yeah. that's doable. We could do that and present it to the board with the final cottage plan, which the design is working on at the next meeting. Yeah. Would that require a uh, Going back to DEP for the permit by rule modification? I'd say no, because we're not getting any closer to the lake than oh. what we show now. And also that permit is for earth disturbance. And there's no like cubic yardage, like we've submitted to you what the volume is going to be, the excavation, but DEP didn't ask for that. Oh, okay. So I say no, Ed. We don't have to go back. Okay. But that would be that might alleviate some concerns. Um, and it would move it further away from the lake. Right now we're probably I don't have a scale, but here's a graphic scale. We're probably eight feet from the high water line for this outlet. And if we could move it back. Another ten, then we'd be eighteen feet away. Um, oh, and one other thing too, and I talked to Bill Monaco about it, and he apologized that he couldn't write you a more detailed letter. But he was taking his wife to the airport; she had to fly out this afternoon. But I talked to Bill about adding some plants, some vegetation. <laughs> on the lake side of where this plunge pool is 
and he thought that was a good idea. But he cautioned me against putting them right in the low point because he said as water comes through, it'll tend to wash and undermine the floor hurt the roots. Um, but we could do some plantings like some shrubs on either side, but close to the end of the pipe. Which would in. Yeah, help with the quality. It'll help with stability and it'll slow down any water that yeah. does build. So that, right. that's what we want. That's that's really what we're looking for is a buffer, you know, whatever buffer we can provide. Mm -hmm. So just at least your notes about what you're gonna put in there would be helpful too. Okay. So you know, lawn is buy. not lawn is not good. Right. And so <laughs> we can modify and <laughs> move both of them further from the lake and specify some plantings at the outlet end. That'll work. And you would still incorporate the plunge pool at the after you go through the swale? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. And that actually the swale would act as a plunge pool right. somehow, yeah. but right. still at the yellow the will have it. Yeah. It'll be like a small dam or like yeah. a level spreader. Yeah. So that as the water comes down, oh, down the swale, the riprap, when it gets to that point, it really slows it down yeah. and takes all the energy mm -hmm. out of it. And yeah, that's a standard you probably know. Um, in swales, we put level spreaders, plunge pool. Mm -hmm. So, and we can do a detail on that so you see that as well. Anything else, anybody? Well, if you can bring that back to us. Um, I don't think anyone really has an objection now. I think we've kind of reached the middle of the road here. Was there anything else you had to tell us? Um, no, I, I did mention the cottage is being redesigned, so we need the height limitations. But what we've talked about tonight had an effect on how all that would work. That's why I'm here for those two items. So, no, that was it. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Madam Chair? Yes. There are several people who are online. I don't know if they're here to speak to this item, but do you want to ask for public input? And we have our friend over here if he wants to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone uh, in the public have anything to say? Yes. Yeah, if there's nothing. No there's nobody there, there. not. No one's raising a hand. It's quiet. Oh, All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll close Thank the you. public hearing and can you introduce Mark to make a motion? Can you both table it to the um the That's week. March 27th meeting? March 27th? Yes, but yes, 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 we'll table that to a March 27th meeting. You know, motion and a second. I'll motion it. I'll second it. All right. <laughs> I'll third it. <laughs> Wait. Uh, you want to vote? Or when they can get their paperwork together. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's that was all right. Yes, ma'am. Am I voting? Um, it's Jim on. Jim did not come, so we should have established that. Part oh, of I'm design. sorry, I could have done that. If Jim's not on, then we're going to thank all We only need seven, right? Well, so he can he, take Jim's place. Rick, is, Rick takes Jim's place. Yeah, right? Okay, yeah. Who takes food? Yeah. Yeah, so I might. Well, you get this. Well. <laughs> you can vote, we just can't count it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought that we had some people on, no? We have some There's people in the public. They're there. They're, They're about there. the quarry, but, but Jim <laughs> King is not here. Okay. Okie dokie. Anything else don't forget? <laughs> you want to comment on the minute? At the end, it's, oh. that's at the end. Of the oh, day. okay. I tell you. Is it, is it at the end of the year? Yeah. Other business is staff report and business. Okay. At the end, so yeah. Okay. 
the mine, the mineral report. The That's mine right. Mineral. Yeah. So at this point, I think we're going to do a talk about the mineral extraction. Um, and I guess you have a presentation for us. <laughs> well, I have comments. <laughs> um, if, if I could, I just have a, a few notes, and I, I did put this in an email, but if I could go over them, Gil, well, Gil, actually, just to give there are people who are attending remotely. So there were some things that do still need to be changed from the, the document that was posted to the public and that you all have. The page numbers are going to need to be updated in the table of contents because this is supposed to be, your vote was to forward this to the next planning board meeting and the only changes regarding monitoring of air quality locally. So there are a few things that do still need to be changed. Okay. So, so the final document would need to include okay. page numbers updated, there's a reference to advertising in a local newspaper. And you did not discuss this before. However, we discussed at a workshop recently that there was some question about whether or not the newspaper was necessary. Now that's for the zoning ordinance. This is for a different ordinance, but same concept. So I just wanted to raise the question. Mm -hmm. um, applicability, I added a section in there so that the, in accordance with the attorney's language, uh, that would make it retroactive, would make the document retroactive from the um, expiration of the um, council order. Mm -hmm. okay. Then there, number four is there was some language that was left in the ordinance that should have been struck out. And that was mineral extraction operations. And that was a Scrivener's error. It was actually caught by Neil, so thank you. Um, so that should not have remained in there. And then I actually found some notes that I had from a previous version that the language in number five regarding detonation of misfires did not make it into the document and didn't get caught the last meeting. So I want to make sure that it's something you still want to incorporate. And that language was added in there in that instance. And then there is a number six that is not on your email. And it was brought to my attention that we had talked about the groundwater ordinance and the fact that the groundwater um, provision in this ordinance party of the mineral extraction was taken out because we did I did not believe we had a, an ordinance at that time and and we have or I have since found out that we do so I did not make any changes to this ordinance regarding groundwater since our last meeting um and that was something that we had talked about and I had indicated I would like to do so there are no changes in it currently regarding groundwater the current groundwater protection ordinance um, does not allow mineral extraction. So we have one area identified on the map and it will not allow mineral extraction. So it's excluded. Um, there are potential other areas in town that you could look at in terms of having that groundwater ordinance exist. So that may be something you want to flag for a future workshop. But I want to bring it to your attention for discussion that it was not added back in. Okay. That, that's an existing provision. Yeah. And we voted on these, right? We did at one point. The, yeah. That was you, you you yes. me. Yes, is that we must have done something like that. Okay. Are we taking comments on this? The item has been noticed as a public hearing. Um the uh on the item number five, and that was language that I had suggested, um, actually seeing it in print as opposed to reciting it, uh, uh, it, it came out a little bit awkward and I would, uh, I would uh, request that we make some edits in that wording to, to make it a little clearer. Um, and uh, I could give you my Proposed changes, if you like. Yeah. Um, okay, we had detonation misfires may occur outside of these times, um, with reference to uh, the lasting time. And I would say at this point, outside of these times, period. Um, and then uh, cross out but, and in place of but, and a misfire must be reported to the CEO or the Winter Police as soon as it is recognized. Uh, 
we can eliminate immediately, uh, eliminate the second misfire, and eliminate the not de detonating. Because if it's a misfire, it didn't detonate. So <laughs> there's, there's no need to be repetitive. So a period after recognize. Okay, thank you. Uh, like I say, it's easy to say these things, but when you read what you said, <laughs> it's, uh, it tends to yeah. sound awkward. So. I think that sounds better. Yeah, any comments? Anybody else? Would we say or or and for the CEO and the police? Or, I said, thinking. If it's outside of court time. If it's outside of CEO time, you're probably not going to get it. But they've got to do blasting within the time, within nine to four, which is in Monday through Friday. So they have to do it on work time. That's why I was just thinking. Yeah. I mean, none but, of Mark could be on vacation. Or yeah. Available. The CEO, right. The CEO might not be available. Okay. As opposed to trying to notify the CEO and not getting them. So you. Well, no, you, I, I think the police need to be notified. That's yeah. why I was thinking, and. and it's like if they just called Mark, he's going to have to call the police because yeah. honestly, you don't want anybody wandering around until we figure out what happened. But my thought was just require them to notify one person, either CEO or the police, but we could require both. I mean, even leaving a message for Mark, um, yeah. but I don't know. Yeah. I'm just. It, yeah, I'm just thinking like the police need to be notified. Yeah. Like I you know, I don't think the burden should fall on Mark if somebody calls up and says we had a misfire and he's supposed to know. I mean, he's the assistant fire chief and stuff. He knows what to do probably. Yeah, right, right. But that seems like, you know, he may not be the code enforcement officer forever or whatever. This is but that seems like a that seems yeah. like it should be notified the police. Yeah. To me, okay. that's really all. Okay. And they should know what to do because that's something they would know how to deal with, I would think. Because that's um, public safety. That's that yeah. they need to know. In yeah, mind. we we could we could potentially just scratch CEO and just say notify the what's our police. Yeah, and they could call whoever they need to call. I, I guess you know anybody. Had, that's I think reason. that's a little bit more clear. Yeah, it's better said. In that situation, what's what the CEO going to do? Right, they're, they're going to call the police. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so. Police may call a CEO. Yeah. Well, right. I would hope they might, but yeah. they might call other people as right. well. They, right. they would know yeah. that's a public safety issue okay. that they would be able to deal with. That's what they do. So just the police, not okay. yeah. reported to the winter police. So come on. Let's get the whole thing read again <laughs> for everyone. All right. Want me to read it again? Sure. You read it on see okay. if I match you here. <laughs> see if I got them all. Detonation of misfires may occur outside of these times, referring to our plastic time. Uh, a misfire must be reported to the winter police as soon as it is recognized, period. That's pretty yep. clear and concise right there. I'm not sure who can argue with that one. Well, we can argue sure. with that one. Nobody can argue with anything. <laughs> uh, okay. Everyone agree with it like that? No more changes? Do you want us to vote on it, uh, you think? Well, you need to take public input and then have more deliberation. Um, oh, well, going back to uh, number two, did we... Maybe it was something come up in the last meeting. Did, did that go voted on? I don't know how I feel about this. That's a, I, posting in the newspaper or just. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I mean, well, there's we, people out there that don't use email and Facebook. I disagree with it. I'm not sure. I feel like there's people that still, there, there's, and it's a small niche, but yeah. you can't require them to use. And listen, some of the people that don't use it don't use it for a reason because they don't know how to use it. And they're not going to be able to learn how to use it. That time is gone and past. You know, so so I just ask them to buy it once they agree there. Yeah. So. And I will tell you, I there I, could be a few that no, they sent it to you. They I don't pay for it. 
Don't you guys just get it in the mail? Oh, it's a free. Oh, we're talking about the free. It's a free advertiser. Yeah. 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 I've read our notices in the in the newspaper. I, I yeah, see that. Sometimes that's how I find out what we're doing. The next meeting, I'm like, oh, look at that. I had John one. John, I don't think you're to mind when you put them in. <laughs> so she won't know what's happening. We are using KV Cog. Uh, temporarily, because the other newspaper they closed for part of the winter and they're supposed to start oh, up again. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Right. So we did yeah, use yeah. Cod yeah. just recently, not Cod. I mean, how Canada. is Thank it you. very crazy expensive to put the notice in? Yep. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But crazy it's important expensive to notice is a very, very it. easy way to say it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can tell you for the thousands of dollars I spend <laughs> in every watershed, every people project. Thousands of dollars to post ads. Yeah. The newspapers got you over a barrel and they're going to charge you. So, what's another way to do it without having to use the internet? Posting it at the town office well, on a on bulletin board? That's, that's on there. That's on there. That's the second that's sentence. That's already something already, already on there. So, yeah. you know, they're posting, posting it at, at the town hall, town websites, Facebook, and alerts at, you know, email alerts. If somebody signs up for it, is that something that, that people would sign up for? They can get email alerts from the town. Yeah. The town. So, yeah, that's what I thought they said. Yeah. So, can I also so, add one more suggestion, which is the library we're talking about? I mean, we, I, in the past, posted public meetings at the, if the library has a bulletin board, which they usually do. Yeah. So, that's something you could add that might alleviate some of that concern. But, like, if we did that, would we be able to make that notice that that's happening? You're no longer like in the newspaper, like have a little ad and be like moving forward. So citizens know meetings will no longer be posted here in this newspaper. And please see, I don't know. I'm just trying to think like, think make about sure it. They do read it that they have an option. You told them where the options are. Like my, say my grandfather is sitting there and he gets the newspaper yeah, every, yeah. every week and all of a sudden it stops. Yeah. <laughs> you know, is, it, is, it, is it not a state requirement that it has to be posted in the newspaper? No. These notices? Not anymore. Not okay, all right. And <laughs> everyone everyone thinks that. Right? Yeah. It used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. used to be. You know, I was with DEP. We always had yeah. It. Yeah. I hate wasting be. money, but I also don't. I get nervous about the idea of people not having mm -hmm. an open availability for them to, to find out information yeah. like this, especially if that's how it's always been done. Something should Post be. Post one more notice and tell them that they're not going to do it. it. That's it. This is it. They can your find last it notice. the library. Or you need to drive into town yeah. now. Yep. I mean. Well, they used to post those wanted posters like. In the, right. In the post office. There we go. But I mean, you know, if people are interested, they're going to have to go and make a make an effort to find out exactly. what's going on. If, if they you want to know, you can know. They don't want email. They yeah. I agree with you. you Usually the know, ones that don't want to email out. probably aren't really interested in what we do here. I, don't mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, bad, it's sad, but the cost is prohibitive. Sure it is. And there's plenty better places to put it. I can add one more piece to mock things up. Um, so as a result of this, I'm making a proposal to the council that they amend the fee schedule. And that would, so it include a fee for mineral extraction um, application. And I'm also proposing a noticing fee because we currently notice the butters and uh, that takes up Deb's time to do that. I did not include the newspaper notification in that because it's a lot of money for the newspaper and it changes. So it's an option. It would be a little difficult, I think, to implement, but we could make it so that the fee covers the advertising. I'm not exactly sure how I do that yet, but it was something we could examine if that's if there's a real concern about not posting. What, which fee are you talking about? I'm sorry, the fee for the advertisement in the newspaper. We could pass it along potentially. Yeah, what, which, mm -hmm. which fees are you going to increase? Oh, I'm sorry, application fees. For so just building permits or for, for, for mineral extraction? Yeah, if you have an application for mineral extraction, or, um, a site that you're going to develop oh, I, under this ordinance, there's a uh, fee. I know you're talking about all. How much did we spend on newspaper notifications last year for 2023? I'm just curious if we know a number. I don't know offhand. I'm sorry. Like, if it's $2,000 a year, that's... Oh, God, yeah. Who cares? I mean, the the, the, the <laughs> weekly one probably isn't as bad because there's lots and lots of ads. Yeah. And it's very, you know, it's a publicly distributed paper. But the KJ, I can tell you, you know, a couple ads and you're at 2000 Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's it's very, very expensive. Hmm. Um, 
why are we publishing and notifying of utters? Why aren't we requiring an applicant to do that and then verify, give us the list, here's the butters they sent it to. We yeah, can look no, at I think that's probably why is, is to make sure that it happened. And I think the town's the one on the hook to notify them. Can I, uh, mm -hmm. so there are places that do that. Um, when I came here, there's this small town feel, it is a small town. And so I know personally, I'm trying to keep things from being too complicated, too much red tape. That's, that is a a, a process that, that's used in other towns I and mean, you could do it here, but when you have property owners come in, they have a shoreline application and you know, it's depend, it depends. You guys can consider that and I can create uh, the language that would, make that happen but it is more red tape more you know a developer no problem that's what they do but you have you know Joe Schmo doing his stuff yeah yeah I like, think it's a little bit too much to put on the individual person I think it's reasonable though that, that to, to increase the fee to cover that though mm -hmm. I, yes. I think that's reasonable because we're hiring people if they're going to be using those services we they should be paying for them and that's not a service like the clerk's office that everybody would use that's a service that only people putting the applications in with you. So I think that's reasonable to assess them the fee of, or some some fee, you're probably not gonna cover all of the costs, but you know, at least like the mailing and maybe a couple hours of somebody's time or something or like that. Or just have that built into the cost of the that's, application. That's what I'm just put it in the fee yeah. and then then I think you'd be covered. Add an extra five, 10 bucks for some stamps and some Xeroxes. We leave them one, 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 right down right. Many. We leave one the way it is. Page numbers? You're talking about number two here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is Article 405B1. Yeah. Yeah. So in, I am looking in the right place. It says one advertise a public hearing seven days. I look in the right place. Page page nine. I'm in the actual. Oh, you're in. You're in the actual. Yeah. I'm in the actual. Oh, audience. Um, we're hit the road. Oh, no, she's. That's what we're talking about, right? Yes. Well, there, yeah. yeah. yeah but we yeah. didn't go there. So, the, the preceding lines is at the expense of the applicant, the plan board shall. And we're talking about who's paying for it. That's what we were just talking about. That's good. And we spelled it out here. It's I guess we're debating whether we want to do it, right? Well, the newspaper one is the one we were talking about dropping. The rest of it, I think we're leaving. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, and again, mm -hmm. line one is about local newspapers, right? Yeah. So my question was, are we leaving it or not? That was a discussion, right? Yeah, we haven't, we haven't done it, actually. I personally would love to see how much we spent last year to see if it's, if it is astronomical, then maybe we do put a couple notifications out and say, we're no longer notifying you this way. These are the ways that you can look into it. We did our due diligence, but if it's a lot of money. But again, this is at the expense of your applicant, right? Right now, it's not, no. Yeah, it is. No, I think it's what read it. Saying. Read it. It's in there. Where, so is, where, where are we at? Page nine. Page nine. Page public hearing. B. All in all track yeah. applications require public hearing. I think the expense of applicant, the planning board shall. And then we're debating number one. Oh. Here it says at the expense of the applicant. Yeah. yeah. That's how I read it. Yeah. And that's what I'm hearing you say. I don't think the rest of the applicant. Everything else. Yeah, just I guess for this thing. And it is I funny. didn't realize we put that in there. You don't want to do that. Problem. There you go. You're saying that's what we're saying. Yeah. Already. We already have it. Yeah. Done. Okay. yeah. <laughs> that's my point. Ed. Are we are you keeping it in then or not? I'm not well if they're paying for it. <laughs> but in general, we should do the same thing across the board. If we're gonna do newspaper notifications for mineral ordinances, yeah. we should do it for everything. Just or don't do it for anybody and just have it be well, what other things do we shoreland like? any planning board oh, meeting we put notifications in don't we don't we yeah we say yeah. Well, what's coming up what date what the cases different. are so we just what, what other applications are is that part of the requirements on the applicant yeah i don't think it is no is this the only this right now, as it's written, would be yes. Yeah, I think well, right now we're not debating the general ordinance anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, could, it would we could talk about that later. It is, but if we if we leave this in here or take it out in here, it is relevant to everything else. 
Are if we're going to keep no. everything. No, this is only in the general uh, <laughs> extraction. Right, I'm saying. But we don't require anybody else to pay for notices outside of this. We're not right. assessing anybody else. Just for this? General ordinance does it, it now. Okay. All right. Well, we're not debating that right now. Does anybody have anything else to add? I think we should see how many people want it to go one way or the other. Or do you want to get public input before we go too much further? Well, Depends. we're, we're, we're happy when we read this. Yeah, we were. So I'd say if we don't make any moves, then it's, it is what it is. And <clears throat> we should at some point, I suppose. Approve these at least. And yes, approve this. Let's get through this. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's something to consider for rather. Should we all agree with two, leaving it alone? Um, who agrees with number two? Well, actually, it's number one. And oh, yes. One, no. B1. B1. I was, yeah. Who agrees with me? Can we agree with that? With the actual. With the current yeah. language, yes. Yeah. yeah. So I did as it. Sure. The ordinance, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Munch. Yeah, it's, yeah, we can do it. seemed like a good idea. For when we do, yeah, it is another workshop. Don, are you happy with that at this I, point? Can I feel clear at this point. Leave it. I, it's. I guess I'm not making a recommendation either way. I just raised the question. Can we do? Uh, can we leave it? Yes, you can. I okay, yeah, okay. That's clear. That's okay. Okay. So we agreed that we want it left there mm -hmm. and to move on. That's what I have. Okay. Uh, right. No, so did that. you want a motion that these five things be accepted with Ed's adjustments? We need to. Our, I don't know. That's what I'm asking. I don't yes. know. Uh, you you can do the straw poll. Ultimately, the board's going to need to make a motion. Um, unless you continue it, if you're ready to make a decision tonight, the, what the action would be to either move it forward to the council with a recommendation to utilize it as is, as proposed this evening, or propose some modifications and move it to the council for their review with the modifications. Yep. Those are the two that I see, unless, unless there's information that you need to have still or um, questions that need to be answered, in which case you could table it or continue okay. it. But, but we don't want to do either of those until we hear from the public, right? Yes. yes. So, correct. There are four members of the public that are on here. We have Faith Talbot. There's some, there's the initials A, K, A, T, Matt Helland, and Steve McDermott are all here. And they may, and we have Gil as well. You can get them. You should be on it. Open the oh sorry I open the public portion of the me of this meeting on the ordinance. Anyone want to talk? No raising hands yet. All right, uh, Gil Susie, I think I'm an honorary member of the planning board <laughs> by now. Five hundred days into this, uh, when we originally brought this up, some of our main concerns were the water, the water runoff. The air quality, thank you for taking care of both those issues. One of the major issues that we had was with the blasting values. The way the blasting values are set right now at 1.25 inches per second is the MDEB standard, which is based on the US Bureau of Mines Report 8507, which again, if you've been reading my communications, you, you've read that. The Bureau itself recommends in their conclusions on page 64, inclusion number eight, that blasting value should be reduced to 0.5 inch per second in order to avoid structural damage, infrastructure damage, and damage to wells. And that's our major concern is the damage to wells from these blast waves traveling. At 0.5, Oregon and Nevada have already adopted them in much of the Western states. At 0.5 inch per second, it still allows the operator to blast away. It doesn't prevent blasting. It's not a little firecracker of an explosion. It's still a pretty strong explosion. However, again, it's 60% or more less than uh, what's being recommended right now in the ordinance. I guess what concerns me is on the third paragraph of that, that 14, whatever, whatever it is, I think it's H. Uh, 
you you basically state that the planning board in the future time can reduce the blasting values as it sees fit. I guess I'm asking the planning board tonight, let's not wait until there's irreparable damages to wells and infrastructure before we the light comes on and we reduce the blasting values. Please reduce the blasting values to 0.5. It's just an extra addendum that you need to put in there. And again, it's not it's been done. It, 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 folks are doing this across the country and, and across the world, actually. So uh, I do appreciate your time again for the last uh, two years, almost two years. We've been at this year and a half anyways. Uh, I think we've come a long ways. I've researched over 200 websites. Uh, I've got over 400 documents downloaded. I've gotten one heck of an education on this. and uh, But I, I do appreciate all of you and the efforts and for the new members, sorry, sorry to bore you with the details, but uh, again, uh, we've got we've got almost all the pieces together. Uh, let's do the right thing for the community and let's reduce those blasting values to 0. 0.5. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank you. 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 Thank 1.25 inch per second. Now I read something in the state regs no, where if they use a lower rate, they can avoid having to monitor the pre yeah. Yep. Is that what this is or not? You know, the, the the lowering of the blast values at the at the uh, uh, the operator, the, the drilling company, is the one who decides that. So and I can't remember what the original blasting plan that had been submitted. Uh, I've got a copy of it somewhere. As if you remember right, about a year ago, the blasting company submitted a blasting plan. And I don't know what the value they were using. But it, it depends on how much AMFO, ammonium, nitrate, and, and fuel oil they put in the ground gives us the, the, the blast value. And by reducing that, they don't have to put the seismometers all over the place. And, you know, by reducing that value, they don't have to put seismometers. Mm -hmm. Again, it saves them money yeah, on like one end. The state was talking. But, but it's a lower blast, right? It's a lower blast. What is that value. number? Excuse me, Rick. You're suggesting what number? 0. 0.5, half, half an inch per second. And again, there's there's 68 pages of math and algebra in between the opening <laughs> yeah. of the document and this conclusion. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I can't follow all of it, but it, it propagates the the, uh, the waves propagate themselves to a point where again 1.25 is the absolute max when it comes when it comes to to infrastructure. They can in some remote areas get a waiver, and I'm talking you know the. The, the Western Mountains, they can get a waiver and go up to two inch uh, per second. But uh, again, it, it requires all kinds of permits. And because again, you're also damaging the aquifers. You know, what goes this way as a blast value also goes down to some, you know, to some extent. Again, there's an algebraic scale that they use in that document that I, I forwarded to you folks. Uh, but again, their conclusion from 1980 clearly states that by reducing the value to half an inch per second really saves a lot of damage to the infrastructure, foundations, wells, but it also saves an awful lot of complaints to, you know, the, the operators and then town officials. They didn't mention town officials, they mentioned, you know, the, the, the folks who work in this environment, so. Oh. Any comments from you? Yeah. I mean, it's reasonable if, if, you know, if we're thinking about that, would we want to reduce down the amount of area in which, you know, right now we have a distance around that we're asking them to be doing monitoring of houses, foundations, and wells. You know, if we're going to reduce down the blast range um, impact, should we reduce that range as well? Just something to discuss. 
Um, I don't see it as a problem, but I'm always trying to protect the town. You know, would the town be open up to any kind of a issue with lowering that number? I can't think. I can't think of how it would because you know, again, talking to Joel, he said we can't eliminate it, but we can control it. And this would be a way to, and one of my main concerns is actually changes in the groundwater fracture patterns. And that's exactly what this does, which is exactly why I said they need to test the wells before and after, because it will change the well chemistry when they do the blasting, period. Um, it could change it because you don't know which way the fractures run, unfortunately. Fractures are not, not they're not based on slope. So they're based on a, a bedrock fracture pattern that, that you really can't define. So even if you're, literally uphill from them, you actually, your fracture that feeds your well could be coming from that direction. And by whatever damage you do to that bedrock, because you're taking it out, you've now changed the infiltrate amount of water and the type and the source that goes into your well. So you're changing, you know, you think about with this massive rock underneath us, you're hitting it with a big hammer. We're just saying you got to hit it with a little smaller hammer so the effects won't be as much. And they make extraction a little bit more challenging for them, but it does lower their risk to property damage, changing wells. Those things aren't cheap, right? You destroy somebody's house foundation. <laughs> that's not cheap. So I'm sure that's 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 got to be expensive for them. Can I read some place that these are things that are going to be put in into uh, uh, other places with where uh, they're going to do blast, blasting? In other words, I guess what I'm saying is. Are these rules going to be coming in at the point at the point five different places in the United States? Do you think? Well, they I have, they have them already. Yeah, yeah. Oregon and Nevada, the, the two states they're that I was able that. to get on their DOT sites, they've already got them. A lot of places in Canada have them also, but again, it's a different country. Uh, in in some places, their state <clears throat> laws can actually ban if it's too close to ban blasting if it's too close to the houses. And, you know, I that, just thought I read something right in now. there that that was what other places are going to start to do or and are doing now. I haven't heard that for Maine yet. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's no, but I was thinking, well, well, if we do do it, it would be ahead of, would be ahead of us. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we don't well, always. We, we're we're also gonna. It's very unlikely. There's not areas in winter. There's very few areas in winter where you have hundreds and hundreds of acres where you're literally a mile or more away from homes and other properties. So that's really where you think about Blue Rock and some of the other big facilities. They're really where they're doing the blasting. They're usually quite a ways away from other locations. So not all of them by any means, but no. some, but quite a few of them. So that may be why it's not as a big concern for the state to change because there's a lot of locations that have that natural bubble. Well, so it wouldn't be it. it wouldn't be a big concern because your chances of impacting no anybody no are a lot lower. Yeah. Even, so. even St. Lawrence uh, Brothers in, in Savannah's, if you look at their overhead where they're at, there's very few residential homes yeah. uh, around that area. Yeah, I know in Augusta they actually went in and bought I think eight homes right there on because they kept damaging them and they went in and just bought the houses and said we own them. Because it was more cost effective than trying to fix it. Well, <laughs> they own it and they're not going to sell it as a property. You know, yeah. they, they basically demolished yeah. the home and, and said it was just easier and more cost effective for them. Because again, they were my, they were, you know, extracting and they were obviously getting closer to the road every 10 feet that they blasted. They were actually moving in that direction. Yeah. So it gave them a bigger buffer. So. No, ended up with them. I I believe so. I think I got to think the homeowners were happy to you know to, to yeah they might have they might have got a good price. Hopefully they, they got a good did. price for their house. Can I ask a question? Sure. Okay, so I just have one. I personally, I'm I I seem fine with the point five, but I just always want to question: Is there any other blasting that say a homeowner might need to do? And this is out of my own ignorance, kind of on how some of these things are done. Is there any other reason somebody might need to use blasting other than just for a quarry on a massive level? Putting a pool in. What's that? Like Putting a pool in. Yeah, Putting pool in. in a pool in. Yeah. Yeah. Can you still do that at 0.5 without an issue? Well, I think you're going to be way below that. Unless way you're below point five. Oh my no, God. No, okay. Olympic pool in bedrock and you really want to have a lot of sand around it. I mean, that you're talking a pretty big, pretty big blast okay. here. 
So I don't think you're going to be, I, I, I'm positive you're not going to find a hole okay. unless they're, you know, work for me drilling and blasting and they really yeah. wanted to. I blasted my backyard in my home in Jerry and it was 35 feet from the house. And I was sitting, the house is sitting on the ledge. I assure you that the blasting outfit out of Gardner, that got the blasting. It made, made blasting. Made blast. yep. They did the blasting, took 10 yeah. yards and fell over it after they set all the explosives. And I, I was like a hawk walking my foundation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. The yeah. levels are so low. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure it wouldn't affect anything else in a negative way that I might not be thinking but of. This wouldn't affect. Yeah. Most most this homeowners is don't have a lot of blast. Sometimes it's blast. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, if somebody it's wanted to blast for a pool, yeah. pool they wouldn't have to go yeah. through yeah. this. Yeah. Right. Because no. they're okay. not. Yeah. Unless right. they're moving. Don't we have like yardage in here? Right. They have to do an eight. I moved plenty of fill. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm in favor. Then I'm in favor of the point five. I can't see any reason not to. Well, what, what? How do we cite this? Do we make we would a motion change? We would have to have a motion to change. Change, yeah. um, change the word. Change, yeah, page change. twenty-three and H, and it's and mm -hmm. instead of having the main DEP article reference, we would have to basically write our own and right. and actually write the rate. So the point five. Yeah, yeah. we could copy. Saying, we've they've got a paragraph. We could copy their paragraph and just change yeah. that one point two five to point five, and that would be fine. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's why you say we got to change the citation, but we've got to yeah, right. change it to something. <laughs> yes. I don't have that. Are you going to read it? I don't have it. You want to read it? I want to read it. Well, we have a clarification. You're talking about omitting the reference to MDP Article 8A. Yeah. And you're going to replace it yes. with another yes. reference? Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And Did that you, reference, do we know what that reference is? You know, we need to look something up. Or we may pull that exact ordinance, there's a paragraph about it, change, yeah, and okay. just change that one number in that paragraph. Okay. And we may reference the document still, and then just add that paragraph with that change. Yeah. Is there anyone from the public out there? <clears throat> there are people here, but they're not raising their hands. Okay. Is that a good one? I think so. Are you done? I could bore you for hours, but thank you very much for simplifying the groundwater effect of you know, plastic damages. Yeah. You put it a lot more uh, eloquently than I could. Again, it's, it's your business. I understand that, but uh, thank you very much, and, and thank you all for considering this. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we voting to change. Okay, we're voting. I, I, I have a moment. Yes. Hello. Hey, how are you? This is Steve McDermott. I just wanted to check in and I appreciate Don referencing earlier that there is the uh, Town of Winthrop Groundwater Protection Ordinance, but I, I would like to point out that the KV COG draft that was submitted did have protections for groundwater protection and the existing groundwater protection ordinance in Winthrop only notes one aquifer. And I'm assuming that's just due to the maps that were available at the time, but it does indicate that... Um, the water protection areas are supposed to comprise aquifers and that the ordinance could be updated at any time when better maps were available. And I'm wondering if, since the planning board seems to be relying on the groundwater protection ordinance to ensure groundwater protection as opposed to layering something else into this ordinance, which I think is always appreciated, again, streamlining and relying on the individual ordinances, would you, would, is the planning board intending to amend the groundwater protection ordinance to ensure that all known mapped aquifers are covered under that ordinance. Yes, we're looking. Sure. I mean, I mean, Maine has a significant aquifer, a sandy gravel aquifer map um, that we could consider you know, adopting, that's really the only known source of aquifers. And all of those pretty much exclusively are in and around lakes and streams. So, you know, given shoreland zoning, you'll find that most aquifers in, in Maine, um, as we define an aquifer, again, significant sand and gravel aquifers are already uh, pre-covered by those areas. So there are occasions that they extend beyond, but there's very few in Kennebec County that they'd extend beyond the 75 feet from the stream or 100 feet from a 
from a lake. Um, there's, there's places where they, they may exist, but there's not going to be many. Um, those are the only known aquifers. I mean, 90, I don't know, I can't remember the numbers, like 97, 96% of Maine is on bedrock drinking wells. And there are no defined bedrock well, bedrock aquifers in Maine. Uh, because unfortunately, we're sitting on a large chunk of rock uh, with fractures all through it, and that's what we all drink from. So, and there is no way to define which way the water flows. Even though water flows with gravity, I know I've made that point here several times, <laughs> but unfortunately, the fractures don't always go the way you think they would. Uh, we've done plenty of studies. There's plenty of plenty of scientific evidence to prove that that there's uh, fracture patterns are not always based in the direction of the superficial uh, bedrock. So, um, so I think our existing groundwater protection measures written into the ordinance, I think take care of the groundwater protection, even though, and, but I would agree, Scott, at some point, if the state came up with a new defined aquifer map, we would want to evaluate that. And that's not just for mineral extraction, that's for any type of impacts, if those significant aquifers, and, and realize that, you know, when I talk about these groundwater impacts and these groundwater drinking, most people see things on the news about California, right? California has three giant aquifers that are hundreds of miles long, and they've contaminated them because they've drilled between them, and they're, they're thousands of feet thick. Texas, the same thing. Colorado, the entire state is an aquifer, one aquifer. New England, and specifically Maine, is not like that at all. An aquifer the size of this room is large, <laughs> other than significant, no, seriously, other than significant sand and gravel aquifers. Yeah. They don't exist like they do out west. We sit on rock. Mm -hmm. We are a glacial outwash component. We got scraped clean 10,000 years ago, and there's nothing left but what that little bit of dirt dumped on top. So we are not the same as a lot of what you see on TV and nationwide. We have a very different geology than they do. So again, our, our aquifers that we drink from are bedrock and they're local by nature. Because that infiltration can happen over decades, but that's how that works. But there are significant sand and gravel aquifers mapped and we could use that map. Um, and I think the only one we have in the ordinance is because of a Superfund site. So I believe that's really the reason that that's yeah, there. That, 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 that's, that, that, that's clearly it's, it's specifically because they don't want you going any near, anywhere near the possible changing the flow patterns in and around that because of the Superfund site. Yeah. I really appreciate that feedback and, and insight, Greg. And one of the things I would just like to note is the beginning with habitat maps that are put out by Maine IFW identifies you know a fairly significant aquifer in the rural district, the only district where blasting as a, a mineral extraction would be allowed. And I just think it would be incumbent if there's a known aquifer in that area that we would want to ensure that if we're relying on one document to protect those activities, that we would ensure and update that that activity is protected, not something that's mapped later or potentially done at a later date. I have that map. Do you want me to go to see it? No, it's, I mean, I, I it, but that's a significant wetland. That's not necessarily an aquifer. It's not necessarily the same. Thank thing, you for your comment. Yeah, I get it. Anybody else um, from the public have anything to say? <laughs> or raise their hand. Or no one's raising their hand. Nobody's typing. We, we unmuted people. <laughs> that's said nothing to you. Can move. So I, I think, well, we know that we're there. Okay. I mean, changing it. Right. I think, I mean, I guess the question just needs to go to Don before I'd be willing to make a motion. Yeah, I think so. The question is do we need to see that written out for um, changing, the, changing the actual flat speed sound wave? Do we need that written out, or could we approve that with that said change and bring that to the council? You could approve it by stating that you want to move the reference, just like you've done. But okay. I would ask, I mean, the two of you are, are the ones that laid it out most specifically for someone to double check that if I pull it, I put it in and make that one change, I would like someone to look at that language if that's... Oh, that's fine. Uh, yes. I, I don't, don't ask me, believe me. I don't, I don't <laughs> mind reviewing it, but I'm just... 
I just don't want to, I didn't want to necessarily kick the can down the road if we feel like we're all in favor with these changes. I just felt like we should be able to approve it, but I have no problem. You know, if you, if you can send it to all of us, and if, if yeah, a couple uh, of us want to say, yep, I read it, it's good, and we're good, then that's fine. So but I think it'd be a good idea to send it to the board. Yeah. yeah. Anybody yeah, want to all review of us, it? If they want to review it in the next week or something, then if they give them time. And then... that wasn't what we meant. Right. We can't deliberate via email, no, but you no, could no. just a one way yes or no if it looks yeah. right. Okay. And if it's not, yeah. then we'll bring it back. Yep. Yeah. Right. Either, yeah, that's what we meant, or no, that wasn't a code. So it's yeah. really words, but we know what the intent is. We just uh, yeah. want to make sure the words are right. So we're going to have Don do it. Then send it to a couple of people here, and they're going to check it. And if they, they agree, it, then it's then to go. And if the rest of us have something to say, well, I think we probably said it. I don't know how to keep it going. And, um, well, our intent tonight as long as, as, long as people check it on, they feel comfortable with it. I am. It's a comfort level with the board. And then and then yeah. it's a done deal. Yeah. So we don't have to go on and on here. With this. Well, if that could be made, it, should we make it? Should we make it official? Yeah, should we do that? Do you think we should do that? Make it take a vote and well, do you make want me to give official? any conditions first or do you want to? Well, we sure I do. I'm just uh, asking. Well, we're going to vote on basically. I was going to think we should not. Yeah, that was my plan. All at once? All right. Didn't, all right. Once. Didn't, Didn't we have one we had to vote on that would just change? I'm sorry. Well, I was going to go through them. I was going to go with, 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 you want me to try? Can you tell me if you need to change? I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> make a motion that. I would like to make a motion. Um, that the five uh, items listed in our email that was sent to the board, um, which is the page number and the table contents will be cleaned up. Um, that is a vote of yes, and the board agrees that that needs to be included. Item number two, that Article five, uh, Article 4.5.b.1 will be removed. We're not going to approve that. We're going to leave the verbiage as is in the document. Item number three is Article 2.4, Acceptability. Uh, and that will be uh, ch made, the change will be made as listed. Uh, number four was Article 3.b, that the first words, the mineral extractants operations will be struck. Um, this was an error and will be fixed, so we approve that one. Article number five, that we're going to follow uh, Ed's suggestion on writing, which is the detonation of misfires may occur outside these times. A misfire must be reported to the Windsor Police as soon as is recognized. Soon as it is recognized. It's sorry. Right. I had my thumb on the hit, sorry. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're striking the CEO. And then Article uh, 6, which is not included on here, but, but based on deliberations we're going to add, is that Article um, 14, Section H, uh, we're going to remove the state reference uh, and replace that with another reference. Um, which is going to include changing the uh, speed of the blast uh, sound wave from 1.25 inch per second to 0 0.5 inches per second. I was looking at that. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All in favor? Uh, just a question. Oh. Uh, for my edification, this is already included, right? The air yeah, monitor. That's what, that's, that was my question. Do we need to read that out again? <laughs> I thought that was the new one. Which one? That is the new one. That's the new version. And it was posted. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's part of it, and I was approving that. I thought we. Okay, all right. That's we're good that's there. Okay, okay. good. Right. good. Everything else is as written. How's that? I, I thought so. Yeah. That I was the same place you were. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. The gentleman is we're voting on that now. We're voting on I thought we voted the whole thing. thing. Yeah. We are. We're voting on the whole thing. On the whole thing. Whole thing now. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're ready to Atlanta. go. Atlanta. Favor? What the whole ordinance? Yep. Uh, Ready to go. Send it to the council. Huh? Okay. Anything to with those changes, with those changes. Everybody. You know, ready? I want to see it all complete. Mm -hmm. yeah. All in favor? Opposed? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> One. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no it's not really you feel that way, but uh, I just want okay. to see it all together it with this. Been... And... It is complete, other than what Greg just said. No, I know. I just want to see it all in there, and then I would say, good. Not opposed to the content. 
voted to accept this this mineral extraction order All right pass it, and pass it to the the uh, council and I have to say everyone did a lot of work and they did a very good job at it and you helped us and we we tried to help you obviously we don't have 50,000 people here ready to beat us up so I think that will all work out fine in the end there'll be people that won't be happy but there always is Downtown revitalization. Okay. Yeah, right. Good. Oh. I'm a sucker for fun as you. I'm glad you're doing that. I think you're doing a wonderful job. No, I was just making up my shoes. Yeah. I heard you were opening a hot dog stand. It feels good when the paint stops. Okay. Well, right now, I'm not going to get caught up over there. We... <clears throat> Other discussion. I have another. Don, you want to go and go over? Yep, yeah, so there's, okay, there's still you have another part of it. Yeah. an action yeah. item. Which is the minutes, yeah. and then some yeah. general discussion. Yeah. And you're all caught up in the minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Does anyone I, make a motion to put the minutes? Uh, no. Yeah. I have a comment on the minutes. Well, I actually have two. <laughs> this is uh, we know what one is. <laughs> we know what one is. Uh, <laughs> second one is I was not present at that meeting. You weren't. No. Well, you're not going to get paid then. I'm sure. I'm sure that. <laughs> I, I, I was on the beach having a drink. You, know, you were so. not there, were you? I was not. He was not. Matthew, only somebody was not signed your name. Which one you on? February twenty eighth. Uh, February yeah. twenty eighth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I heard that one. So you weren't there. He was on the beach. I was on the beach having a drink. Okay. Anything else? Not. Since I wasn't there, I don't know about the rest. I missed it. I missed it. I looked at it. I didn't even. No, I wasn't. Well, I just had a general comment. Is sorry, my mic's still on. Doesn't really matter. I guess I talked loud enough. Um, just when when we move, like like Rick comes from being an alternate to up to a voting member, should you leave alternate on it or should you remove it? I don't. I don't know. That's more of a question. Because Can we for each item. Yeah, just when 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 we look at that, I think last time, you know. If you know, if last time it was sort of like, should we remove alternate if he's actually a voting member? And then if he's just here as an alternate, put it as an alternate. I don't know. I'm just asking From that. From the record standpoint, it, it well, should that's, reflect that. That's why I guess what I'm thinking. So later on, I voted on it. Yeah. Coming out of the well, and especially if you made a motion or, Bingo. you know, things like that, should that be yeah. removed or highlighted or I, I don't know. I, I'd say just do application by application because it can change. So I will, I can call that out. It does I'm say it, when you do the minutes, if, yeah. you know, if, if like Rick's a voting member tonight, he should be on that list and just remove the alternate. Yeah. And then he's on the list. And next meeting, if Jim's here and he's not a voting member, he goes back and he's an alternate. I don't know. I'm just that's my only yeah. purpose. Well, that's leave, possible so, too. Yeah. And that would be, but I'm just saying, I'll make it clear. Right at the top, yeah, I think, like, I don't know. It just, it okay. seems like, we should be sure they're voting members so that we don't get ourselves into trouble. I didn't actually think he was. I'd say what I feel is what you was Jim. Brent just brought that up. I don't remember seeing who or the week before. Jim wasn't here now. I don't think so. Not last week, no. Last no, week, Jim last wasn't meeting, yeah. last, no, it was or we yeah, last meeting. We were having all the issues with that. No, yes. I don't think yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, because we had a lot of problems. I wonder how long it'll take to get the So it's right, Jim. It could be a couple of months. It depends on what I got. I think some of them can be ready. Do they have an inventory with this stuff? They have an inventory with this stuff. They have an inventory with this stuff. So does Clarence make a motion to approve the minutes based on those changes? 
Yeah, we all dealt with the challenges. Um, um, as far as I can I, 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 I see John right, and I like to wait till it stops right. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, not fine. All, right. no, all right, does someone want to make a motion to make that change? Go right ahead. Will we take a minute? For those changes we noted? <laughs> Second. All in favor? Opposed? I have a question on a minute. John, you and I talked about the minutes from the Tom Miser case. I thought I saw that here someplace. Where we brought a forward pressure, we approved the minutes. I have to go back and look at the last meeting, you mean, when we looked at all those minutes? No, it's the minutes we, we talked about the other day that yeah. it said it was table, but it was approved. Yeah. No, yeah. But yeah, that meant. I don't know if the updated version was the one that you looked at. I thought it, I thought you brought forward. You brought them forward tonight. I thought I saw them somewhere. I did. I didn't. So or you did. So that does still need to be brought forward. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I think so. Yeah. Okay. When we approved the Tom Miser project, the minutes that we approved last meeting said that we tabled it, and then, indeed we approved it, and that was the November eighth. Was it? I believe the eighth. November eighth is when we saw that case twice. The first time we tabled it. The second so it was time. Tabled in September. Yeah. And the second time we approved. We approved yeah. it. The minutes reflected. I should have caught it last. Oh, meeting. it did. Was... We approved the last meeting as being tabled again. Oh, okay. Oops. In fact, we approved it. So yeah. that's what I was talking about. Yeah, we did approve it. So you're gonna bring it to the next meeting for yes, approval. Yes, I'll have that on the agenda. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think that's it. Step four. Almost. We do. We do. We did. We're supposed to do homework. Did everybody do their homework? Yeah. All right. I, I emailed on that. I did not do any homework. Okay. It's okay. We could use it. One bit. <laughs> so my thought was that for the next meeting, and right now I have two applications and one of them is probably going to come off. Um, so it's a short agenda in terms of a development review. If you wanted to look at that table and, and everyone's prioritization of those items um, and the policies and procedures draft coming up with a, a final document with that. Uh, so I propose those as being on the next agenda under other business. Okay, everybody got that? Yes. So right now, have we got something on the policy and procedure? We're supposed to be looking. Here's the draft, and I can send it out again. No, that's it's, right. yeah, I think it's in this. That's yeah, right. Binder, right? That's that right. was our team. Yeah, yeah. And I can have it all laid out for us all yeah. night. Yeah, here it is. Great. Yeah. 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 So we're supposed to pick three. Oh, wait, weren't you going to redo this oh, and yes. like? Three, four, and five. Five, four, one, seven, or something. Five. Which one is this? The um, conditional use application? Yeah, I have notes on the, from the okay. workshop of the yeah, other so so I'll four. get those updated. I, yeah, I, five, four. Four. Oh, wow. I was kind of questioning something. How many of them did you ask for in the very beginning? Ask for five. Yeah. There's no, I just picked that number because I know that realistically we're not going to be able to Everyone has five and it's okay at a time, but oh, just for, five, for, eight, for, eight. for starting oh, with the discussion. Yeah. He's, he's fair. <laughs> I figured everyone's going to pick the same five. No problem. Okay. okay. Can we quickly go over that? See what people are thinking. You want to, you want to do it? We, we don't have everyone's feedback yet. So, I mean, that's up to you if you want to have some general discussion, but I was going to compile everything. You can ask people what they mm -hmm. thought was important. I just kind of like to get a head start on thinking yeah. where people, where people are thinking, what people are thinking of. We can kind of do a round table if you want to. You can talk. <laughs> what are we talking about? Just the cop plan. The cop plan? Yeah. yeah, we had to go pick. Five things. I did not do that. Okay. Yeah. See, that's Wait, was that our work? homework? That was our homework. Was that our homework? Yeah. Was that given today? No, that was given oh. two days ago. <laughs> two days ago. Oh, okay. Has anybody read this? These little, I mean, I've got several different ones, but you know, like this one's uh, manage, economic management plans to do. Yeah, okay. 
And then we have the next one, public policy and strategies. And then we have another one, we have a transportation. Okay. So those are all chapters of the comprehensive right. plan for yeah. 2010 and the update. And I tried to combine some of the things that were brought to work in 2010 that were so relevant. So that those are the tables that I'd like everyone to look at and say the comp plan entity prioritized these things in terms of short term, mid term. Um, but even within that, where is the board at? Because we need to start pecking the way up. This so is what you yellow, put in the back of the binder. Correct. So in yeah. yellow, she has noted where we where we're meant to be. Right. There, will be there was there was at least mm -hmm. one that I have highlighted that I thought we should have been noted. Um, I think you know one of the things we that come up multiple times for us it wasn't highlighted in there for us was specifically the water and sewer public water and sewer and where that is because that drives that to me that drives our development right I mean that is an important piece of the puzzle and we weren't included in that and I thought that was kind of odd I I know we can't say oh we need public water here but I think we should be involved in the discussion if they want to involve us in all these other avenues, all these other topics, we have to know where the water and sewer is going because that's really what's going to drive development mm -hmm. in my mind. Because you know, a lot of our board charter is to protect the water bodies, right? We're environmentally sound. We're saying where are we protecting the water bodies? And that those go hand in hand. So we have to be part of that. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was weird. I think I wrote down one of the numbers that sounded like it was a bit, but you didn't have that as one of the highlighted ones. Mm -hmm. You know, I just read everything because I'm just silly. But uh, I mean, I I went and just said that one particular item. I can't remember. I just sent the email like an hour ago, uh, but or two hours ago now. But anyway, I think that's one thing that the board should be part of, and that to me that would be my top priority is to know where it is feasible to expand water and sewer. Not necessarily. I know there's a long public process. I know there's lots of issues but where it is feasible and where it would be economical to expand public water and sewer. I know if you talk to some of the people of water, you know, the water district may say nowhere because we're at capacity or whatever, but I know we have a main trunk line running down 202 that we could tap into and there is costs associated with that and everything, but should we be discussing that? It can be done. It could be, it could be done. Um, you know, a lot of our pump stations, like we did back in the, I think it was the 80s or 90s, that's why Memorial Drive has all sewer. Because that was, they said, all of this sewage is going into the lake. We want to add sewer here. Well, now all of our lakes look like that, not just Memorial Drive, not the sewage. I meant just the, the fact they're all developed, yeah. right? They're all development around all of them. Should we be adding more sewer, you know, handling more sewer around yeah. some of the other water bodies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's with resource protection. That's what we're talking about. And I'm not saying, you know, we would need obviously help from the public works department on what the cost is. Does that make sense? Is, you know, how many pumping stations? What would the, you know, overall infrastructure cost? We would need to have some kind of general guidance, but I think we should be at least in on that discussion. And I think we should be driving that discussion because that was 90% of the comp plan, what they're driving at. That's important to know, oh, we want to develop this. We want to make this. We want to make this. Well, all those economic factors, a limitation could be the fact that they don't have public water and sewer. So, if there's consensus on the board on that, like I'll pass that information along. And when the, the council is going to have more public input before they adopt the document, but I can get that to them before any further public input as well. That's good. Everyone agree? Yeah. We don't have to make a public Just for clarity, what you. Proposing, I, I'm just proposing that I mean, like they they had a couple of things talking about public, public water and sewer, and the planning board was not included on their side table. Okay, and I was just saying when they have those discussions, it would be nice to be included in that. I guess I wasn't adding a whole new item, anything like that. Even though I think it should be discussed, I think we should be included on those items because I feel like public water and sewer should be part of the discussion. Okay, yeah. We should be in I, on the discussion. I, I agree with that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. We can't be the drivers of it. That right. You know, there's, That's there's, what I'm trying. there's no way we could be the drivers of it, but I think we should be involved in it. Yeah. I think that's true of a lot of these. It, it, before they've got our name on there, we're not going to be the drivers. Well, yeah, them. that's very true. That's very. Yeah. But that's why I was saying for that well, one in particular, I think yeah. we should be included. Yeah. On it. Yeah. 
Well, well, I'll intend to do them is wait until after the next meeting when you have more discussion because there may be other things that come up that you want to yep. forward yep. And, and I'll do that at that time. Yeah. If, I, if I understood you, that is in section two underneath uh, public facilities and services. Two, two point encourage local store and water district coordinate plan services, pensions, and future land use plan. We're on that one. Two, two is if public water supply expansion to anticipate, identify, and protect suitable sources, we are not. That might be the other. That's the one. Yeah. So it's 2.2 .2 that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's roughly. 2.2, I think, is the one you're talking Yeah, and it's also in finance and development, it's 9.1 and 9.2. Public facility for services, 9.1 and 9.2. I think it's also mentioned, and we're not included. Well, Donna, do you have those specific sections that Greg's talking to? 9.1 and 9.2, and the other one you referenced in your emails. 2.1, 2.2, and 2.1 we are on. Yeah, but 2.2 2. 2. 2. we are not. Yeah. And that's what we talk about, development. Yeah, yeah. We're not yeah. on. <laughs> and again, not being the driver, just included in the discussion mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, overall, I thought there were very few of them that we should be the driver of. Yeah. Might have only been one that talked about environmental. The rest of them were, I think, we're just along for the ride or part of the discussion. I think under housing 1-1, one, one, where they talk about increase in density, de yeah. decrease lot size, but I felt, probably be involved in that. Well, yeah, but I felt like we've already, I mean, that's yeah. we've already had those discussions, and I felt like with the, the accessories, right. Dwelling structure, we've already covered that. I was like, haven't we done that? Did we check well, that we were, It kind of felt like it, but I wasn't sure. We were looking at changing the ordinance that incorporates like right. setbacks and right. road and stuff. Well, we did. We had to include that because we had to rush it. Remember back in December? Well, but I don't think to... setbacks from the road. Were no, we didn't. We didn't discuss the table. We didn't adjust all the table and the lot sizes. So we, but we talked about those, and that's yeah. on our agenda. So I kind of felt like. That wow. kind of happening. So a year ago, that. it sounds like when looking through the, the historical documents, it looks like a year ago you discussed those changes. Yeah. I don't have a copy of them yet, but I think that the, it appears the discussion didn't come to a conclusion because no. nothing went to the council. So right, no, it, did, it, it did, and that was because of by the way compliance. That was that was the whole reason, and it made a lot of changes, and yeah. um, and and we had he incorporated a lot of our comments and some cleanup. To the primary ordinance. So, I mean, he had the version that we were going to use, but then we kind of got derailed with 508 compliance. Put it well, yeah, yeah, and, it never got completed. And we didn't complete it. Right. So, but I think we had a lot of the discussion. David was kind of pushing a lot. Of yeah, it. David. Yeah. But yeah. I think we had a lot of the discussions. I don't think it would take as long because I think we aired a lot of the concerns. Oh, yeah. So I felt like we were a good chunk of the way there. And Ed was doing some other cleanup where. It, we kind of reference sometimes we'd write things out like three different places, the mm -hmm. same thing. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of like, why would, why, why should we do that? We had some things in sections and, where it didn't apply. And exactly. Other things yeah. In sections yeah. where it should have applied yeah. universally. And right. So right. there's a just, lot of just, just some cleanup. And I felt like we were getting close. Do you have, can I get a copy of the, the work that you did, that you all did? Because I don't <laughs> see it. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I think, I think it's in an email. I, I didn't dig back. It's, so. it's a mess at this point. That's um, okay. I, I'll, I can clean it up by asking you questions and incorporating the language into the ordinance. I mean, if you're comfortable with that. Yeah, there's got to be That's some. Part of why I'm we talked about uh, it and had it in documents. Yeah, we had, we had the printout. I know we had a version. I'd be happy to share, but it, it, it unfortunately, it was probably at a point where it uh, would be more confusing than anything else. <laughs> Um, Maybe we could sit down at the table and you look at your notes and I'll hand mark a copy. My my suggestion on this is um, we've incorporated some changes since then. If I could get a word copy of the current ordinance mm -hmm. with all of the changes we have currently, it'd be a lot easier for me to go in and work with that and then then come back with something 
that, that now we could talk about rather than have a bunch of missing pieces. That chart we've got in the uh, ordinance with uh, setbacks and all that. Yeah. Pretty sure. I don't know who did it. Maybe David did. Well, David he put one out and he changed those. Yeah, well, we all talked about it, and I think we were more or less in agreement. But that's what I was putting in that new one, too. Yeah. So we could find that, I think. Oh, I have that. I, I have all that paperwork. Oh, it's just, right. it would be such a mess. If I had that to Don, she'd probably scream. Well, a lot of the stuff that I'm working with now is a little crazy. So I'm whatever works for you, Ed, I'm, I'll take it up. I, I think, I, I really think I would feel better getting. A word copy of a current ordinance. Uh, can't go online because that PDF can't do anything with that. No, I can give you the word document. If you if you want to email me a copy a word word copy of that, uh, and I could start work on that. Now uh, there's a couple of ways to do it. I can go in and I can just make edits, or I can do the uh, underlying strikeout. But I guarantee if I do that. It will be. It it will totally blow up. <laughs> it would be it would be so much underlined and striked out and moved and yeah. and uh, it, it it would it, it would almost almost be unreadable. So we uh, have to post with any changes that ultimately be made. We have to post. Um, it make public and for you all to be able to review them. So at, at some point it has to be underlined strikeout because you have to see what's changed. Well, if that's the case, it's going to be all underlined strikeout. <laughs> well, you I think that can't wait to ask for. Yeah, the version I've got, the email I've got from July 25th has the updated table and it has a list of all the things you did. Yeah. What I, I did and then you said what I have not done and then you went through all the things you had not done. That was the version yeah. that we brought to the meeting that we were yeah. working with and talked yeah. about. So it's a draft version. I could send it to you, Don. That would be great. But it's yeah. just it's, 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 a little it's I'd be glad to send you what I got. Yeah, it's and, but I know I know I, I think we made changes after that, but it was really the five away compliance that threw us really sideways in terms of moving it forward. And did I mention at the last meeting I put in yeah. a line item? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the town manager looked at that favorably. Obviously, it's the council who makes yeah. the decision, but yeah. that would yeah. be helpful. Yeah, the new software we just got is awesome. That's all I can say when it comes to that. It was expensive. It's like $3,500 for the license, but I just we just did like three PowerPoints, and she was doing them in like an hour, making a five-way compliant. I'm like, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was just amazing. It just put the alt text, put all the formatting in, and... Put all the boxes it was just the software did it all it was like wow so that you know somebody that couldn't see had it at a sight impairment could use that so yeah what's the plan we're going to get what we have we gone yeah okay yeah and then when do we start working on it i guess is the question coming to agreement on it i guess in our next open time spot well so this is why i want to look at the table and have people prioritize right what what it is you want to be working on this sounds like a short-term item because you've already put so much into it right. so i would i would suggest that you look at that sooner rather than later so at the next meeting you have one maybe two applications um and then workshop items so you could start at that exactly meeting process. Process. If, if it's ready and you're ready, yeah. You'll have some kind of format uh, for us to look at. Potentially, it depends on Greg and Ed's schedule. If they have time to get me that information, and then I can work with it. So either them or at the next meeting after that, it sounds like you probably could roll into it. Can I mention one thing that I think we should be listed on? Sure. It is the Recreation Policies and Strategies. 2.2, working with the land trust and conservation orga organizations to pursue opportunities to protect important open space and recreational land. 2.2, is that's not the same one that Greg already, I have 9.1 and 9.2. 2.2. 2. This is another route. Another route. Yeah, this is the recreation policy oh, okay, and strategy. Sorry. Thank you. I don't know how much it would have to do with us, but it could potentially with different, you know, us gleaming different zoning and what's around there with likely to be a list for other things. 
Yeah. When I look under the housing where it talks about I I allowing addition of at least one accessory <laughs> apartment, et cetera, isn't that what we just talked yeah. about? Yeah. So that this table was, was created yeah. prior to that work. Yeah. 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 They yeah. also noted yeah. tiny yeah. housing. They want yeah. tiny yeah. housing. Yeah. Yeah. Housing the same thing as accessory. I thought that was fine. That's what I thought. The state has legislation around that now because there weren't codes for it at one time. You couldn't build a tiny house and meet codes. Um, but my understanding is not to look at more closely is that the state has already made changes so that as long as our code references that, and I believe it does, it's a string that you can build a tiny house today. So I can follow up on that. They also had stuff in there about modular homes and mobile home parks. And none of that is, um, it's all permitted to my knowledge yeah. under the current regulation. So I have some of those flagged to look into, but I believe that those are in place. And then it talks about condos. And I think that you might have that on your list, but a condominium is a product, not a particular, I'm sorry, it's a form of ownership. It's not a product. So you can condo a boat slip or a mailbox mm -hmm. or, or a dwelling unit. And so that's another one that we want to look at that I'm, I'm a little like need some more background on. What about modular or not? Yeah, modular homes. Are they considered just like a stick built home? I yeah. believe it is. They're, yes, they, they, are. they are. Are they? Yeah, that's what I mean. Interestingly, they, they kind of classify them as manufactured, but uh, functionally, they're just like stick built homes. Oh, okay, I was thinking of manufactured more like double wide and stuff. Well, like they fall under hot. Yeah, you know, it, like it, it all depends on whether their foundation is permanent or not. Yeah. That's the big definition that I heard. Right. The distinction but, was. Uh, a lot of it's also uh, like what they call a mobile home, it's actually built on its Back. own frame. Yeah, yeah. Where the modular is. Is built and, and put on a foundation. Is set on yeah. a temporary frame for transport. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I guess another way to put it is that structurally, there's a drastic difference between the floor structures on a mobile versus a manufactured. Manufacturers are designed with much, much more meat of structure to go on a foundation. Well, well, a mobile, modular. Excuse me? Modular home. Modular is a form of Manufacturing. Is modular is a subset of manufacturing. Yeah, so mobile homes can come in too. Mobile home can come in sections as well. But again, the, the difference is a structure that is the base. And they both are delivered on structural uh, structural beams, but one goes on a foundation and the other one goes on a slab with blocks. And it's a matter of distribution of that weight on that slab so that the subfloor or the floor uh, structure is suitable. Yeah. And uh, I, I have a modular home. It's it's just like a stick built. Correct. In fact, it's, they are, they're both it's, stick built. It's more sturdy. It's some more sturdy. Some of them are better. Depends on how they were done. But. Now, you want to confuse the issue, go to a concrete slab building, which is stick built. Yeah. There's no floor involved other than the Right. Well, yeah. so that's another. That's still a hybrid. Build, yeah. That's a hybrid. Yeah. What about a concrete build? Pardon? You can build a concrete house. Correct. Or a full house, which is a concrete house. They do. Yeah. We may need to get Mark in here for some of those conversations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mark oh, has the other one. The appreciation one appreciates. Yeah. Well, we got into quite a discussion on that on the census because. They had all those different categories. Oh, really? And I don't know if I ever did get a straight answer. But <laughs> one time they told us, well, it doesn't have any wheels under it. I said, yeah. uh, well, what if they took the wheels yeah, off? Took the wheels. <laughs> it had wheels at one point. They do take them off after they Oh, sure. They yeah. Most, yeah, they, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. They usually do. Yeah. 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 Most of them they do. Yeah. Then they'll sit there on the wheels. Man, yeah. what did you like after a couple of years? Yeah, no. <laughs> You would want it on the wheels. Betty, I guess another question. Another, yes. another vein. We talked a bit about approving the, the digital map mm -hmm. somewhere in the near future. It is currently, Joel from KV Cog is um, merging it with the assessing data and updating the groundwater protection district on that. And then it will go to the council because there's no changes, right? It's going to be it's that representation that you all did that Don and the, the board looked at. And so it's 
it's it's on the list moving towards the council agenda, but it, Joel's still working with it. But this re this group has never reviewed it. The shade go forward. Yeah, we haven't. John yeah, and I did the work. Digital zoning here? Pardon? You have, this started, group has not, this group has not reviewed. I'm sorry. Yeah, we started it, but we never finished. John and I did the work with yeah. Joel. We yeah. did start it. But fair enough. This committee has never accepted yeah. our work. Yeah. We tried to review it and the projector wouldn't work. And Correct. We yeah, work Correct. And it just never. I'm waiting. I'm like, yeah. I think we should have that to the next one. Well, I'm sorry. We need to do it. Yeah. I assumed you already would. Well, thank you for bringing that up because I was not aware of that. I misread that. So I think we should look at that in the short term. We had Joel in and Joel was here. The projector didn't work and we moved on. Okay. Never. Do we have a projector that we can use now? I work. There's one on the floor here, I think. The, the, that little tabletop one that will. Yeah, it's real that white. I can't let the fire station work very well. That's right. Yeah. Um, um, that we brought it down there. It is, I think it's necessary to have it gone. I would guess Joel needs to be here, right? Oh, yeah. yeah he's the one that does the projection. Yeah. He's got it on his computer. It's not a big process. We just haven't done it. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have the PDF that we could look at the image, just we can see where the lines are. They're static though. Like I don't know what Joel, if you could move them as you discussed it, or if we could mark up the PDF for him to. It's helpful make the if changes. he's here. If Ed says I got a problem with that one right over there, and Joel says okay, let me fix that, and we move on. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm going to guess 98 percent of the work is done, and we may not know the other two percent. Ed, you may. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why we want Joel here. here. That's right. That when we went through it, that's what he did. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We corrected. He did it right there in the clock. It looked like he had to go back. We had the map for 52 maps. He's good at it. We went through 52 yeah. maps with Joel and we fixed <laughs> everything so they matched. You two, right? You two did it, right? Yeah. 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 Joel. I mean, worst yeah. case scenario, we could take notes for him. So that's what we need to do. We have to wait for him to so we're it. ready for what you're talking about. Absolutely. I, I misunderstood. I thought that that had already been done. And Joel just got appointed. He is um, now the director of KBCOG. So I know he's straddling, you know, passing things on and, and mm -hmm. his new role. So, um, well, let's get it done with Joel. It'd be a lot so, easier. yeah, I will reach out to him and see what his time frame looks like. Uh, you know, just keeping in mind that he's going to have a good one. schedule. Maybe one session should do it. Right? We should have it done. Yeah. I don't think we're going through everything. It's so uh, one session. More general question. You all got to all gotta buy on to what Don and I did with Joel. That's basically yeah. what we're doing. <laughs> So one official meeting, act, one meeting, right? Well, and he could export oh, a PDF meeting. version and send that to him. So that way, act. we could pre-review it, and then we just would go through the actual GIS layer. That might be a lot quicker and say, you know, did anybody have any questions? And then, we, then that's on public on the public record, whatever. Right. And we would say, you know, bring up anything we had concerns about or areas we want to look in more detail because the PDF is, you know, you can zoom in and stuff. Yeah. But what are we going to compare it to? Because the only thing there is to compare it to are the physical maps, which is why these two did that. Yeah, I, I don't think, think that we were letting them speak for them. us by doing I, well, that. Well, and I felt like you, I guess <laughs> I, I was thinking, what was happening. Yeah. I was thinking, <laughs> you know, possible gaps, possible overlay errors, things like that, but you would not be able to know how it compared to the. Original well, we did. Map. That. You're right. Yeah, right. That's what, we're, that that's what we're saying is that, map. That, part, <laughs> that part is done. So now I'm just thinking of errors where. There's overlay issues where things are on top of each other, or there's questions on the detail layers. Um, but maybe he's already cleaned all that up. And I think we did that. Yeah. What you're well, describing. I think, I, I think I think that was the hope is that you did all that. Yeah, that, that was and, the problem. But, but is there anything <laughs> that got missed? That's the only question. Quick overview. Yeah. Approve it. Yeah. Move on. I have a PDF that I believe includes all the changes from previous okay. discussions with you all. I believe I have. One that's supposed to that you all haven't looked at. So I, we could start by I can start by emailing that to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kind of yeah. see where you're at. Yeah, it's okay. The rest of us. I don't know what's in. Well, and I yeah, I didn't, don't think it really makes sense if we had if we had Don and Rick and Joel all go over those paper the digital conversions. I don't think there's any need to do that again. No. I think it's more just a question of okay, do we see anything glaring? Do we see anything that we don't like or want to comment on and then we bring it to the board for discussion and public 
input or whatever. And yeah, then, I'm not saying that it, is it, it probably is, but I'm just saying that would follow the due process in my right. mind right. correctly. That we just say, yep, I've looked at it, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Let's put a motion that we move it to the council and approve it. Or, or, you or, see or, some or, issue. or we want something, bring it up, let's something. fix it. Right. Yeah. right. And then we're also giving the public time to look over that, right, yeah. online. Yep. So if they catch anything with their own property that seems incorrect, That's right, before they'll bring it back in. Right. So it's supposed to be a representation of the of the um, tax maps. It's not supposed to be, include any changes. Right. Correct. Otherwise, that's a whole public hearing process. Okay. Right. Correct. Okay. Right. But but at times you're going from paper to digital. There's always going to be interpretation. Mm -hmm. There has to be. There's just there, that's the way it works. Um. So, you know, mm -hmm. that, that so it, it's not changes. You could say it's correction. Right, and I'm very distinct with those words mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because when you use those words, you're safe from saying this is not a update. This is a correction mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the paper line. Sometimes you draw a little fat, you draw a little crooked, you draw a little whatever, and the lines don't line up. And you're like, well, that that doesn't make any sense. It, it looks like that should be the property line. Let's make the border that property line because then you know, made up. Did that, right? Right. <laughs> exactly. that's, well, that's exactly what you did. You said, you know, I'm not going to have these five foot gaps where it's like this person has a little bit of their lawn that's in a different zone. We should yeah. be like, what the heck is that? You know, well, so we that, started with Joel. It didn't line up. No, it won't. Yeah, we it, fixed it, it won't because, I mean, the paper maps, they're drawn to scale. Like they're on different said. scale. Yeah, they won't. Right. They won't right. line up. Right. One of the next steps that was going to happen was that it was going to be noticed to the public and linked to the website so the public could review it. That was supposed to be part of the review process. So I think that's after so town council looks at it, could, or no? That was supposed to be, that no, was before, to already happened. Before. That was going to be the next step. Before, and then it goes to the town council. It was supposed to be a public notice process. Yeah. And, yeah. and people, so people could go and look at their own property. Exactly. And yeah. say, hey, yeah. this is right or this isn't. Right. And then somebody would have to look at it and see, is it right or isn't it? Right. Well, you're giving them an opportunity That's to say, right. you know, is there something wrong here that you identified? Right. That's exactly. all. You're just giving them an opportunity. doesn't mean everybody's going to. It just means if somebody does and they have an issue, they can bring it up and we can look at it and they say, are, what does it look like right. on the paper map? What does it look like here? Oh, well, this correction, we slid this over to match the property line. That's right. But has that ever been posted? No. no. Okay. No. So to me, the, the, the process is us review it get it posted and that's a, a secondary step yeah. that needs to happen and by the way that's going to be an ongoing process we don't need to show there. town council first anything before we post first, it for public no, review we went ready to go yeah to okay they just like tonight then they would do a final we approval would, yeah they're, they're okay. doing the right. final approval but we do public before yeah, the public and how long do we the public supposed to give us feedback right. and then we adjust accordingly right. if necessary before we pass it oh, how okay. long would we leave it up for public review Forever. Yeah. Well, yeah. reality is. is well, yeah, that, but before we would give it to the no, council. Did, like, did you hear what Don said? What? They're, they're coupling those maps with the, the evaluation process. I guarantee you, as that, uh, that process evolved, people are going to look at their property in those maps and come to us for corrections. It's going to be a natural process. Yeah. And it's going to go over, what are they talking about, 25 for the reevaluation? 25. 2025. What's your reevaluation? Oh, I thought uh, it was 2027. I don't know. Okay, let's go. They're funding it at 2025. Yeah. Okay, but that said, that's what you're getting ready for. Right. Right. Two years yeah. to fund it. <laughs> so a lot of that's going to happen because a lot of people aren't going to pay attention to it yeah. between now and then. Oh, Until they apply for the government. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. And then they discover, and that's just. So I think the next step is to review it with Joel's help, and then get it on the website. And make make it available. Yeah, and then we go from there, and then the council has to approve it as well because they're going to integrate it with the evaluation process. Right, and then it'll be a fabulous tool. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. But I agree. We don't want to let it sit. I, I guess the longer it sits, no, the more other like maps and layers that could be created and modified, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you are on an old version of a map and a new version of oh, a map. Yeah. Now you have to do another digital rectification because you're on different really horizontal data. Oh, it is. It's, 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 it's a nightmare. I guess we ought to have a process for how we're going to address those. The feedback? You get feedback, and then we'll, we'll, well, I think who, we'll, what? I think we would have to look at the paper maps and say, what does the paper map show? Because we are. Well, that's how you do it, but I'm saying, and it would say, are they right? Zen, does it go to the CEO or 
Does it, it could. I mean, it could go process of the ordinance, right? Yeah. It goes back to us. If there's comments on the maps, I would think they'd come to me because I'm going to work with you. Yeah. Right. And if it's a if it's a cha a change is a whole different thing. But if it's just like cleanup, making mm -hmm. it understandable, then that you all can discuss that so here. And the other ones you'd have you have to set aside. And, and you're going to be talking to Mark a lot about it. Or we did. Yeah. In the process. Yeah. We talked to Mark quite a bit about questions. Right. Well, I, mean, what, what, uh, I, I can envision a, a variety of comments on this, some being zoning comments, others being the basically what the tax map says. As a board, we don't have any control of the tax maps, do we? No, and they're not survey quality, so that's no. still That's still an approximate line. Yeah. Those are those are available. Those are approximate lines. I mean, anytime you ask for questions, you can get some, but those are not questions we answer. That's right. The I'm only saying. thing that would come to us, I mean, and we could say if there are a list of them, Don could bring them to the meeting and say, hey, we had these three questions come in for clarification. We go pull up the projector. We all have the paper maps. We say, what do we think? If it's we'll the paper, question. well, if, if again, it's a question, the line is in the wrong spot. Like we moved it. Or, oh, you know, we moved it from the paper. They um, thought they were X and they were Y, and we go look at the maps. No, actually, you're Y. Well, then it doesn't come to us because they were just wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. If it's if it's an interpretation, if it's one of these yeah. boundary yeah. issues, we can look at it as a group and decide. Okay, this yeah. line got adjusted to that property. Does that make sense? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they wanted to have the front ten feet commercial or something, and it's like, yeah. no, that doesn't really make sense. Yeah. So it, it, then then it becomes, do we accept this as a correction or not? Right. To me, it's like it only comes to us if it's truly an interpretation, a correction. If it's a true correction, not a exactly. We're not talking about I'm half in this if zone, I'm half in that zone. I want my property line there. That's not no, that's right. That's the, no. We have to. We have to make it a line. We have to make it a line, and it's 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 a again. It's a digital. I mean, paper to digital conversion. That's what we're doing. So it's only if they have a correction with our interpretation because the paper map is a little fuzzy. But then as a board, I think we can make the decision of well, which way we want to lean. And that person can come or go online and be part of the meeting and say, I think that's wrong. But we can then vote and say, we think this is the interpretation we should use and nobody can. Yeah. Theoretically, sense. they would have a harder time arguing with it. So can we yeah. agree we have that on agenda fairly soon? I think so. Done. I think we should put that on soon. I can't speak for Joel's time, but I'll do what I can oh, um, right. for the next yeah. meeting. And, and you know, I'll talk to him from see what it looks like on his end. But in the meantime, I'll start, you know, getting materials for a workshop. And if we're at a point we could post it publicly, that might be worthwhile. Because again, those comments we would want to have for a public meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that could happen sooner rather than later. Even if we didn't even have it or review it, if we didn't have goal next time, we could put it on the agenda to make it as an item to say we want we're we're okay with the PDF being posted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that seems reasonable to everybody else, we'd be able to vote on that, and then that would give two four weeks or whatever the public to comment. And then when we have Joel, we could be actually doing those possible addressing those possible additional corrections to the interpretation correction that we are already doing. If there are any, this kind of changes the priority. <laughs> well, I think it just shifts it back. I, I don't think I don't think it changes much. I think it would just be probably no, no. I mean, I mean it would be four to six weeks. Ago. Oh, but we've no. talked about what's priority. Well, yeah. They keep changing. Yeah, I think I think it has to be in April, and yeah. and if how long we want that open for public comment would be the end. Well, again, we could decide that next meeting. I agree with you. I, I agree. I and it might depend on what Joel builds. I agree with yeah. you. I just got to be finished. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, that we don't. Job. We don't want that out there. We no, want getting people to review it and comment in advance is going to be very difficult. And we'll just do the best that we can. Yeah. But it's a lot of times it's when they put it for a building permit that they go yep. do something. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. And that's exactly well, but again, exact. you know, Rick, people are still going to have concerns. But again, if we're just making a digital version of the paper, they can go and complain mm -hmm. about the, the paper version. Mm -hmm. They can complain about that. There's nothing wrong with that. But that doesn't mean if we're not doing rezoning, we're not doing rezoning. Not at this time, correct. Yeah. So <laughs> but once it's digital, then we can say, okay, maybe we can go and decide how we want to redraw those, talk to the you know, comp plan and what the future plans are and those things. That makes it a lot easier for anybody to interact with. 
to look at how they might want to future change it. You know, do we want to expand the industrial zone, shrink the industrial zone? Where does the village zone end? All those questions, mm -hmm. you know, that we want to make any of those changes. Big discussions. Yeah. Future discussions. Yeah. We're just saying move it from paper to digital. We'll right get now. the tool ready for those discussions. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I, I would like to know, just for my own interest, I guess, maybe what what people put on their paper is the first thing they thought needed to be done. I really, I'm, I'm just really curious that people thought after reading all of that, it, whether you wrote it up, what was the most important thing you people what thought of? What did you pick? What did you pick? Hey, you I go did? first, Eddie. <laughs> I put 1.1 housing, and the second one was 2.1. Economic development. Yeah, one point one was high on my list. Okay, yeah. I, I kind of felt like we were addressing some of that. Yes. Yeah, we are. So I feel like yes, it's definitely on the list, but I feel like it's already on the list. So if you're asking what we add to the list, no, I might I'm say it's asking what you think. That's I think I think it is high, and that's why we oh, want to address that's what you it. Think yes, it is. I, okay. but I feel like we're already that's already we'll on our ahead. list, and we're yeah. working. That. So we just need to keep it there. Yes. Yeah. What do you guys think? It's important. I agree. I so how is it? Yeah, yeah. Getting that type of thing together so we get more people, more taxes, more growth. Well, it just I mean, even just addressing the table in our sheet, the uh, um, the uh, accessory dwelling structure, all of that. I think that's we just right. we got to tie we got to tie all the pieces that, together here. And that goes. Like, it does. It, it, fits, it, it all fits together. That that that's I think important. Yeah. So, oh, it does all fit together. It does. You can't do one without no, the other. No. Really. Uh, that's good. That's funny. Did anyone have a different one? I haven't reviewed it yet to okay. it so like so. I didn't pick a top one. I just picked five. Yeah, I did one. I had well, one. Seven. I still haven't done my homework. One so. by one. one, one. <laughs> Back to you okay. next time. I, so just because I think the housing is really important, but I, I'm more of a responsible development on the housing end of things. You do oh, more. So get to one one that, it doesn't really say it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I'm kind of going in the other. I don't want more people. I'll take I, some more we businesses. We know you don't. <laughs> so you want to look at your site plan and your subsidy regulations to make sure it's quality development. Is that right? Right, exactly, and in the right spots, and not just well, willy nilly throughout the town. And yes, that, that's what this is to yes. put it in a responsible place. Take some more people open up yes. certain yes. areas. They, got the lids you want they do have to live somewhere. It's Jamie said she takes more people, and I said, if you must. <laughs> but yes, we want response. We don't any houses. Oh, like, yeah. Like that's why. That's we, so that's just that's not it. Right. But that's that's why we're looking at Well, that's it. interesting. I just thought that was interesting because we had talked about it. When it's I went nice. over after, after, after we talked about it, I was like, hmm, I wonder what everybody else would. So I think that's good to know because that actually includes a lot from each of the subjects. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have a good board here. Well, <laughs> I, I had seven or eight, but I think some of those could be you were supposed to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were supposed to do that, man. I didn't do that. <laughs> well, we're not going to be able to get to that many. So as right. long as we have the top few, and the top few seem to be about, about the same thing so far. So far. Yeah, these guys are going to just throw it off completely. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, sure, absolutely. Or your team that copies more words. And I kind of looked at it in a way where um, I did first list was a short term goal, a mid, um, a long term, and they were ongoing. And I listed the one of those that I picked. Then, then I picked smaller, but. Sometimes on you, you'll do an ongoing while you're doing a short term mm -hmm. because it well, well we did an ongoing this is still going um, but you need to short term you could be working on something all the time but a long term may be different times we will work on it you're going to have multiple irons in the fire is that kind of what you're yes. yeah some things that, yeah well then we have to be prepared for those grenades to get rolled in yeah you're right and the marijuana ordinance took a year and a half solar ordinance took a year <laughs> And talk about you know self development ordinance mineral time yeah. mineral yeah. Well, we had the, well we had the we had the accessory that. dwelling you well, know still working on it you had to go all this information yeah. yeah yeah we uh 
Well, we, we did pretty good on this, on that, Doug. We did. I mean, <laughs> I, I think I think we tackled a lot, but I'm just saying the, we have to be prepared for those. Maybe. Something's going to come up that we don't know what it's going to be. Exactly. The, so, the next yes, ordinance sure. that we'll have to do. Motion to adjourn. Second. Yeah. Everyone in favor? Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's, I don't want to. I want to do around tonight as well. I don't. I just raised my hand. Thank you. Thank you for explaining. I know. What you been looking for? So, are you kidding? Right. 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 Right.